Before the game, somebody asked you about your last game against Arkansas. That's all history now, right? <laughs> yeah, I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about that. <laughs> um, although Will McNair certainly wanted to talk about it quite a bit in the in the post game, but um, you know that wasn't on the forefront of my mind. And, and um, um, just proud of my kids. Just proud proud of them. They they you know I've heard all about this place. I've never been to a game here. I've been to AAU events here a long long time ago, but. Um, obviously, it's a great venue to compete in, and um, it felt really good. It felt really good about where we were at leading up to this game. Um, we talked about, you know, getting the road win at South Carolina, and we talked about um, not because we were happy about it, but how we handled the atmosphere at Alabama, and, and the crowd really didn't affect our play, didn't feel like it affected the outcome, and we wanted to kind of lean into that um, t- tonight, and we did. You know, you talked about, Neil said you talked about earlier today that you felt like you had a really good plan for this game. Would you like to share a little bit of that plan with us? Sure. Um, we wanted to protect the paint at all costs. You know, they're not shooting it great from three. I don't know what they were tonight. Um, four for 18. Uh, so we really, really wanted to try to keep the ball out of the paint as much as possible. And um, we guarded our own men. We didn't switch uh, for the first probably 35 minutes of the game. And then the last five, we went to switching all the ball screens. And, you know, that really helped us because, you know, they get in a rhythm and Zero was just driving the ball against us. And we were struggling in our coverage. And we went to the switch and I thought it helped us. But um, and then we went in the post, you know, like we, like we normally do. We, we trapped them, even though they're not great scorers down there. But we thought it was an opportunity to try to get our defense revved and, and turn them over. We actually had, you know, had planned to play more zone, but, um, you know, we felt like our defense had settled in, and so we didn't didn't do that. I, I did it on the fly once, and my staff's mad at me because they banged a three, but that happens sometimes. Well, I was asked before the game, because of Arkansas shooting, do you think Coach Jones will play more zone defense? And I said, well, I don't know, but – as good as our man-to-man defense is, I would be surprised because our man-to-man defense coach is outstanding. And, and, and well, thank you. But what, what I showed them on the um, clips of our practice leading up to this game, like, guys, we're in man, but I wanted them to feel like it's zone. Like, I want you to be strong gaps, strong, strong gaps. Normally we don't come off guys in the deep corners when they drive the ball at them, but tonight we did more than we normally did because we just wanted to protect the paint at all costs. We felt like – protecting the paint, and then just it was going to be a man's game around the basket. I mean, they were better than we were at fish, and we struggled, obviously, all night long at the, at the rim. We just couldn't couldn't get as many uh, baskets at the rim, and we were worried about that, obviously, as the game unfolded. But um, we felt at the end of the day, like the last thing we talked about is, hey, you know, one of these games, you better win the rebounding battle if you have a chance to win. And we were really good at halftime. We, didn't, we ended up winning it by a couple, um, but I thought that was the key to the game. Well, you know, you keep talking about protecting the paint, protect the paint. I thought your offensive game plan today was get in the paint. Yeah. And Deshaun Davis was just outstanding. Was that part – coming off that high ball screen, getting in there, yeah. it, he was outstanding. Doing, do, you, do you talk about that before the game, or is that just flowing the offense? You know, we talk a lot about inside-out offense, uh, either via the pass with Tolu or Will or any of those guards getting in there. It doesn't mean it has to – you know, the ball has to be shy, but as you well know, it breaks the defense down. And usually they'll – you know, multiple opportunities will present themselves if you're able to get the ball in the paint. And, man, the first 10, 15 minutes, like, we were really running good offense. Like, I really liked where we at, where we were at. Certainly in the second half, um, it was a little stop and start. And, you know, we were just trying to survive, it felt like, it, at the end. But, um, you know, it's, it, you got to give some credit to them, too. They're big. I mean, they're, they're guards are so big and their, their bigs are big like you know I think we talked about in pregame with Neil that's normal with the bigs around the league but their guards are so big and the court felt felt shrunk you know it felt smaller but um, we were trying to, to spread them out in the second half especially and get them in as many side ball screens as we could not only big but athletic oh, boy. you can be big and slow they're big and athletic and they yeah. can cover yeah. I thought in the second half their defense was about as good as we've seen all year, Coach. I mean, they really got after us. But every time they made a play and the crowd got into it, we made a play. We came back and made plays. And just talk about Cam Matthews down the stretch, what he did and the experience he has in these situations. You know, when he made the first one, I felt really good after that because, you know, it's confidence and rhythm. Um, I was pretty upset with him when he got the foul on the baseline out of bounds. Should have been. You know, and, 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 you know, of course, I love Cam. Everybody knows that. He's our emotional leader. 
And, of course, you know, he's, I didn't follow him. I'm like, I watched you follow him. Yes, you did <laughs> yes. follow him. Coming from the guy that's never fouled. You know, <laughs> never. Like every, he never fouls. Never fouls. No. And, <laughs> and we, you know, we had an exchange. And, um, but I know him. You know, I know these guys well enough individually and, and where we're at. And he obviously responded and, you know, played with four, you know, the whole time down the stretch. And some of the people on the bench were, were like, not yet. I'm like, no, we got to go. You know, we're not, I'm not leaving some of our best players on the bench on a road like this. We got to get them in the game and, and try to figure out how to win it. And then um, he obviously made some big, big drives and some big free throws. The, the play, you know, I'm going to let Neil get back to it, but the play down the stretch there where he drove the ball to the basket and Mitchell met him at the oh. rim. What about yeah. that one? Oh, I mean, was, was that a collision? It was them and not us, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, Cam is so explosive, and, and they are excellent at shielding the rim. I mean, they are very well taught and well schooled, way better than we are, and that was one of the reasons why we were struggling at the rim. But that play unfolded right before me, and uh, he didn't make it. He got the putback right, and then we stuck it in the goal. But that was quite the athleticism from both guys. I want to highlight one guy who only took one shot today. Eric Reed <laughs> yeah. has Eric Reed has struggled. I mean, that's just kind of been what it is, if we're being honest about it. How huge was that moment for him to step in and knock down that three for you? The best part is our, 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 our uh, bench went yep. crazy. They were so ecstatic for him, and uh, hopefully, you know, that will take the lid off for him. He got an offensive rebound. And one thing that um, never enough people talk about is he never turns the ball over. I mean, he just does not turn the ball over. And, and, you know, to put someone out there to defend, rebound, play hard, not turn the ball over, I mean, that, that's a luxury. He just doesn't turn the ball over. Yeah, he's had six turnovers all year long. Um, that's remarkable for the amount of minutes that he plays. So it tells you he knows who he is, and he can shoot the ball. We all know he can shoot the ball. He's had games, and he's certainly in the tough slump. But we kept throwing him out there. You know, I believe in him, and our, our team believes in him, and uh, that was a nice moment. How fun's the locker room been for about the last, uh, I don't know, three weeks now, five in a row? Tonight was really fun. You know, they had to wait because I had to do the, the TV, which, uh, you know, that, that means we won, so that's yeah, a good right. thing. But um, they were rocking and rolling. They were rocking and rolling, and, you know, we're going to enjoy this. It's going to be a fun uh, plane ride home. We're not going to get too ahead of ourselves. I know what's looming on Wednesday, and we'll get right to it as a staff. But for the players, we're going to let them enjoy this for, for 24 hours, and then we'll regroup and uh, try to put a plan together. And we need everybody listening to us to find yeah. a way to get to Humphrey Coliseum on Wednesday night. Do we ever? Do we ever? I mean, it's such – every game's big. I mean, you know, I'm not – it is. Every game that we play is going to be a big game. It's just reality of the situation. But, you know, it's Kentucky, and they got beat today. So we're going to take everything they got and then some. You know, I, I wasn't happy about that outcome, to be honest with you. But, you know, I can't have any control over it. But we definitely need the hump to rock. We need everybody to – if you can't make it and you're a season ticket holder, please try to figure out a way to, to get people in your seats. And if we can help you in any way, email us, call us. Uh, we'll do our darndest to create an environment because uh, it's a heck of an opportunity for us. Let's make it bump on Wednesday, folks. You heard the man. We'll see you there at 730 for State in Kentucky on Wednesday night. Congratulations. This is one that I'm sure you won't – forget coach you don't know how big this was i probably don't I, I nine time don't. in do history you, i think do you understand you don't know this the entire career i coached at mississippi state this is the only place in the southeastern conference my team did not win that makes me feel i mean I, i'm, I'm huge, sad for you but no, it it's, no it's too better. late to be sad for me i'm just that's that's how big this win was here today for well, you. you know scott Paget told me that uh when he was at Kentucky, he thought this was the hardest place to play. It is. And I'm thinking, think so. you could have told me that after the game. No, it, it's the <laughs> toughest place to play. Listen, I'm not, it, it, I don't know why, but I love going into places like this. I, I, there's nothing more than I like than going into a place where you know it's going to rock and you know you're in enemy territory. And I think it's the, the sign of the truest test of your character and your togetherness and your toughness because, you know, it's easier to win at home. And trust me, it's hard sometimes too. But to go into a place like this and, and to be able to, to make the plays and have the bench and the timeouts that we had um, just means so much to me. And I know these young men are growing and they're getting it, and, and I'm super proud of them. 